Um, okay. So welcome everybody to Louise and Robert's <laughs> virtual book signing. I am Bob Nelson. Uh, I'm the lead cat wrangler for Brickade Media. And joining me today is one of our authors, Louise Robertson, the author of Rose Marie Hernandez Williamson, The Experiment Known As. Yes. And um, also joining us is Terry Collins, who has a signed book coming to her Yay! as Yay! part of this uh, fantastic event. So, um, Louise, let me just kind of get you started here. Tell me a little bit about how you're doing through all this. I'm doing fine. Thanks for having me, first of all. Uh, thanks for setting all this up. I really appreciate it. Um, I'm still working full time. I'm a web developer. So it's weird to be in the apocalypse and still be doing your job. You're like, why am I QCing code? <laughs> like the world is ending, but I guess it's not really ending. So we still need those codes out, put out. Uh, yeah, so, but I'm fine. Uh, the family is fine and growing and, and uh, school for the kids is always a worry. And I, you know, that's my, actually my biggest concern moving forward isn't really about me, it's about my family and how school will happen one of them is at the end of high school and the other one is at the middle of college so it's a very precarious time i'm dragging this off subject i'm so sorry but like this is the the position of school in this is a very messy knot you know uh spreading viruses is most efficiently done with school kids <laughs> you know uh but interrupting college can mean a uh, dropping out of college, you know, and, inter and and all of the high school students I know are like, they want to go back to school, but they can't. And I know that lots of kids have struggled with motivation. So sorry to drag off topic. No, no, I'm fine. fine. Short <laughs> answer, I'm fine. <laughs> but I worry about my kids. So isn't that always true? And that, no, and, that, and that's exactly right. You're absolutely right on that. And, um, Let's kind of zero in a little bit on why we're here today. So specifically, we're here to promote um, Rosemary, but but you have um, you've got a couple of full length books out. You've got a few other chat books out. You um, you're very active. Uh, you have a Patreon that you use to get supporters. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, I have I almost always have lots of projects going. Uh, to start from where you ended with Patreon, uh, I have uh, three ways that supports me. One way is I write a chapbook of poetry every month. And so there are two levels where you get a chapbook a month. One is chapbook plus extra stuff. One level is you support the chapbook. Um, another thing I use Patreon for is I run a weekly workshop called The Meta Factory that's about generating new work and thinking creatively. It's highly poetry focused, but People who aren't poets have tuned in. It's like, I have a relative I never talked to, a cousin who's like 25 years older than me, and she tunes in every week to think creatively. And I love that. I'm so glad I can sort of connect with her that way. Anyway, so there's a tier that's sort of the tip jar for the Meta Factory. And, those, and then, of course, I have just like $1 say hi, you know, support. So I do use Patreon for that. Um, I'm almost always producing poetry. That's why I can write a chapbook a month. Um, so that's just part of my ongoing process. I, I, I work at it. I let it happen. I do the thing. It gets out in the world. Um, uh, I am working on a new novel. One of the things about writing a new novel is so you have to get that momentum going. It's really hard. I'm sure everybody in the world has their own version of this, but I have to be in it and going, and that sometimes fails. So that's kind of where I am now with a new novel. So, cool. Yeah. So let's zero in. Let's zero in a little bit about Rosemary. Um, mm -hmm. so give us a little bit of the history of the book, like when it was when you started to think, "Hey, I've got a story to tell," and kind of when Rosemary kind of formulated herself into you, and kind of how that came to be. It was very, very quick. Um, I was. Uh, working at a job that wanted to lay everybody off. <laughs> so, um, but they wanted to keep some people, but they decided to just let everybody re-interview for their job. This will make sense. And I'm like, I'm not going to do that. Uh, that's toxic, <laughs> I thought to myself. Uh, I, I learned later that they, they want, I was the one of the two they wanted to keep, but you can't play that game. 
So I took the package. I said, I'm going to give myself a sabbatical and write something. Well, my, my dear friend, my best friend, Scott Woods said, you should make board games. And I'm like, I should write a novel. I should write a novel. So I called up Brick Cave and I said, what do you need? And he said, you said, fantasy science fiction. And I'm like, well, I'm not as comfortable with fantasy, I said to myself, I'll write the science fiction, YA, because I want something my mother can read. Meaning no sex sheet, she's not good with the, she says, I really don't want to <laughs> traumatize my mother. <laughs> so uh, that's what, whatever, you can edit this out. Um, anywho, uh, I, anyway, I, uh, you know, I, I then, there, right? uh, what? You know, I'm totally leaving that in there. This is my process then. <laughs> After that, I went on a walk, a gin ginormous walk. And by the time I got back, I had two thirds of the book in my head. And so it was very fast. I had a vision for where it would start and where it would end. And so I just kind of pointed myself in that direction. I have read tons and tons of novels. This was, so I'm like, I, I should know how to do this anyway. That's what I did. I made a map of the uh, spaceship she's on so I could keep track of when people are walking around where they are. Um, I made character lists that kind of drifted away because the characters tended to evolve into their own selves. And um, I did find, it is true, that once I got to that ending, I thought, this is not good enough. And I made another ending on after that. So there's a moment in the book that was going to be the ending but it's really not. And so then I went back and I like caught the beginning a little bit and yeah, stuff like that. <laughs> it's interesting because when you say that, I think maybe I know what that point was, but I won't spoil it with a spoiler. So, um, okay. so talk to us a little bit about how the book has been received so far. How, what kind of feedback have you gotten on it from people that have read it? I get a lot of it's very well written and i love that that's my favorite compliment you know um one person has emailed me saying did you like some of the things in the book have sort of already come true and and she thought it was very anticipatory of events because i read it wrote it a couple years ago right so uh i got that and i just really the people who read it and responded to me have been very complimentary i like it and and they say it's, it's good pacing, and I like that. Which I obviously completely agree with. <laughs> um, but let's talk a little bit about your cover. So let's give your artist some shout out here and talk about this cover and how it came to be and kind of um, who that person is and, and maybe how they, people, other people can get more art by that person. Well, I'm very lucky to be living in the town with Brian Moss. And... Uh, I, I knew I wanted to get a cover that was all for, like specifically made for this book. So I thought that like, instead of trying to go the route of maybe um, using uh, uh, royalty free art or something like that, like some of it is extremely good. That I wanted something uniquely created. And I know a lot of art. I know many, many artists in town. Brian is, um, he, if you ever come to Columbus by plane, you will be able to see him and his artwork at the airport because he's one of the artists that is, uh, uh, captures the spirit of Columbus so well they put him in the airport. So yeah, you see Brian Moss there and he's very active on social media. I see him on most, I think Facebook is mostly where he promotes stuff. No, I really wanted something unique and compelling for the cover that uh, answered the needs of a novel, like a novel cover needs to be things. And he apparently does a lot of commission work. So I commissioned it, he did a beautiful job and I'm very happy. Yeah, I sent him the standards from the, you, the publisher. And uh, I told him also what I kind of was interested in seeing. I love the colors, like see these purples and blues they're just fantastic it's a it's a scene from the it's a stylized scene from the flight deck of the spaceship where a lot of the stuff happens you know um and i but i especially love the back which is sort of the the, the shuttle of, of the 
where a lot of other stuff happens. Not to do any spoilers, but that's, I love that. It's, it's simple lines, but I really love it. I had a really clear idea. I even did sketches of what I thought the ship and the shuttle looked like. So he, I sent him those and he used them. So that looks, um, it looks like a painting. Is that a physical painting or did he do it digitally? Uh, he gave it to me digitally. I'm sure it's a painting though. Is it? He has the painting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I guess I merely paid for the rights in the, and yeah, no, the that's, I'm just curious, digital stuff. I'm curious if, uh, if people could go see the actual painting of that. Yeah, maybe. I think that would I'll be ask cool. him. Yeah. Two paintings because of the back and the front. Right, because of the back cover too, sure. So um, I know we talked a little bit about this when the book first came out. Um, we had you do an interview and we talked about what the future for uh, Rosemary is. Um, any change, any thoughts on that? Has she got more stories to tell or? Ideally it's a trilogy. Just sort of generally, uh, you know, this one occurs mostly in space. And the next one, mostly on earth. And then the third one, mostly in space again. Oh, very good. So yeah, I, I know what happens you to heard her. It here I first. do know, right? <laughs> I do know what happens to her. Like, I think that's the yeah. first time you've named it as a trilogy, though. I don't think before now you've ever Well, said that's a huge trilogy. commitment because that is not the novel I'm working on right now. So, But I do know what happens to her. And I feel like um, the one of the impediments to the second book is that I don't know enough about what happens to her, right? Okay. So I, I have to put in that intellectual work for the vision. Like, it's one thing to kind of know where she is and you what's kind of happening. a lot and... of fantastic pieces in place, though. I mean, as you go through, as you go through this book, you start to see all of those things that are the next stage for her, just from the little drop, yes. the drop, which is going to make that a very good, yeah. a very good second story for sure. Absolutely. Yeah, so, I have a map um, of what the Earth looks like. I know, too. right? Yeah. So yeah. Um, your your uh, person that needs to sign book is here. So go ahead and sign that for her while we're on the. Oh, video okay. So that she can uh, okay. witness the signing forever. Okay. Now, I yes, have, to read it. What, One, what questions do you have? Ask away. Well, I'm, I mean, I am just excited to read it. I have, uh, I was looking up at my bookshelf because I'm pretty sure I have a collection of uh, Louise's. Oh, my type of the month. Yeah. I'm, oh my God, I think I'm dropping things like these. Oh yeah, the first time I well, I used to do all those in real life. That's big. It's I have uh, those. I have um, this many. Yep, I wrote a lot of chat books. You wrote a lot of chat books, and I have a ton of them. So I'm looking forward to reading the novel and the trilogy. But I remember when um, when the when you posted the first uh, picture of the cover. Because I oh, love yeah. Brian's work too, and I got really excited. I'm like, I can't wait to read this. Yeah. Yeah, he was so easy to work with. Like, he knows what he's doing. He's extremely professional, mm -hmm. very easygoing. The main character is uh, her grandmother is from uh, Puerto Rico, and her mother's Puerto Rican. So, like, we had to go back on skin tone, and like, he was so, like, I I could just say what I was thinking, you know, right, right. you know, and so I wanted to get it right. And, you know, that's a whole nother story, but yeah, he was so. I'm looking forward to reading about it. So yeah. I can't wait. I can't wait. There's a, there's another author at Brick Cave that taught me to do something that uh, uh, Sharon Skinner taught me that when you're going to sign something, oh, this is reverse. You make sure you get the spelling right. This is right. That is <laughs> no, you will be surprised how, how easy it is to write the wrong thing. It's now. <laughs> you get in the moment and you, get, you, just, you start writing and then you think, oh, I probably shouldn't have done that. Oh, right. Okay. No, you got it right. That's me. Yeah. Well, I, I mainly I just wanted to drop another bouquet the author name. I didn't oh, want to. But there you. was somebody once I had to go. I they're my friend, 
but I looked on Facebook for the spelling of their name. I do that. I do that when I get cards. Yeah, I do. I'm like, oh, let me just double check on Facebook real quick the correct yeah. spelling. Uh -huh. Sometimes it's yeah. pronounced one way and spelled another. So I'd rather invest the time to get it right than take a guess. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, so I must not care about you at all. I didn't spell your name right. Exactly. I never want to give that impression. So um, while you're doing that, Lou, I won't want to distract you because you're focused. <laughs> As I realize, wait a minute, I better stop because you're trying to actually decide. Man, these are 2006 through 2008, two years of chapter. Mm -hmm. That's way, way back. I haven't gone, I don't go out to poetry as much anymore. Well, I don't think a lot of people do right now. Well, there's that, but yeah. <laughs> Okay, there. I have signed it. There it is. Hey, thank you so much. Hey, thank you. <sighs> Trying it. Well, yeah. I the, when I did that series of Catholic of a month, it was uh, in real life, and I had access to a printer that could print booklet style. Um, but that, but that was the most onerous part of it. You think, oh, the writing. It's not. The, it was trying to get that dang thing cover the cover the paper the, the stapling the cut everything so now i just do it digitally through patreon and that makes so, it life so yeah. much easier i can only imagine yeah, <laughs> yeah. it does and it's also like uh, the poems that make it into those are the poems i it's like the cream of the crop so i already right. have an edited set of poems so yeah it's so funny because oh, yeah. I can literally interchange you with Bill right now because Bill was just saying, you know, I just write every day and it seems like every six months I've got enough material for a book. Here's another book. Uh, I could I could do that, but I'm, but I, yeah, but usually what happens is like, um, it, it helped me a lot when I was um, asked to do one of the, I was one of the readers for September when Streetlight Guild had a monthly series. And I just pulled two poems from every month, and boom, I had my feature. Really? Okay. Yeah. That's how I did that one. Because you have that much material. That's awesome. Yeah. But I, can, I, I, I always think the pieces are better right after I write them. <laughs> so I got to kind of watch like, oh, it's not all good. <laughs> Let it age a little bit. Give it a little bit of time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. Louise, if you were going to say, hey, these are the people that I read that influenced me in the creation of Rosemary, and you should read them, who would those people be? Oh, um, I, you know, the first person in my head is Larry Niven, who wrote the Ringworld series. Um, I'm afraid to mention the people who influenced me early, because... Um, they are extremely sexist writers. Um, Heinlein, yeah. um, Alfred Bester, like a book called The Stars My Destination blew my mind. And I've read it again recently and it's, it's very rapey. It's very like, oh my God, this is what was influencing 12 year old me. And then Heinlein, uh, he has a book called Friday. Um, and it blew my mind because the character was uh, female. That's the reason it was mind blowing. And I've tried to read it again. It's so deeply flawed. And I know Heinlein was uh, promoted as very progressive at the time. And I can see why, but if you read Stranger in a Strange Land, uh, uh, another Heinlein book that's influential, he, um, he uh, has the sexist things often being said by the women characters, and you're just like, I don't know if I can take that. Um, but more recent, like, um, I, I am blanking on, uh, was, there's a woman, Octavia Butler was, is very, very influential with me. 
Um, I think everybody should read her. I, I'll read anything. So, but I do have to say, if you point to my sort of uh, beginning inspirations and the, the stuff I read compulsively, I read the classics. I was reading Isaac Asimov and, and uh, Heinlein. I've read um, Pierce Anthony a lot. And just mm -hmm. don't, children should not read those. But, but you can learn from Pierce Anthony. He's written, <laughs> I don't know, hundreds of books. Like in all of them, he has a clear path some of them a little more clear than others. He has compelling ideas. He does a lot of this versus that. I get it, but he is successful at getting those novels out. So much as I might sit here and make commentary on the problems with it, they are the literature of their times and they are successful in many ways and they can teach you how to write a novel. Um, yeah, recently, um, I'm really, let me lower the stack because one of the things I put under it was one of the more recent uh, influences. Martha Wells writes a series called Murderbot, which is currently um, just one of my favorite. I've never identified with a robot so much in my life. Um, so Martha Wells is a, a current uh, science fiction writer that I'm reading that I really, really enjoy. She, she writes really fast paced, quick, um, the, this is a series that has like four novellas and then this is a full length book. Um, I also was deeply influenced by, um, he wrote The Martian and Artemis. Uh, boy, where, where's my phone so I can Google the name, speaking of names. Um, uh, but The Martian is the book that got made into a movie. Uh, with Andy uh, Weir? Matt Damon. Andy Weir? Him, yep, yeah, or weird. If it's like weird. weird, it's spelled like the beginning of weird. Yes, he was a big influence. Um, uh, he wrote. I I've done a little research on how he wrote The Martian. He it was a it almost done in an epistolary way, but with a blog. He blogged it, and so it got revised and edited, and people commented on the science, and it had just so much work, and it turned into a novel because people were requesting pre PDFs. And they were requesting, like, it got turned into a novel because it's so compelling. So I'd say Andy Weir, Martha Wells are two current people I'm really, I'm loving. They're charming and fun, and they know how to move a story forward and write characters that you really can identify with. The main character, the Martian, just swears his way to hold it. It's so, so like, oh, I identify with that. I love it. Yeah. Is, is that a good answer? That's a great answer. It's a fantastic okay. answer, Louise. So um, just give you that seven minute warning. For some reason, I'm oh, getting the, I thought I had a full account, but apparently I mm, soon. seven minute warning. Um, but if people want to find you online and learn more about what you've written, obviously they can go to brickcavemedia.com, but where else can they go? Well, if you're interested in the writing, the best place is that Patreon. And um, that's what, Patreon slash yeah. Louise Roberts? Uh, I think, uh, let me uh let's see here that host i was not um it's well i <laughs> it, it, it's not a friendly name patreon.com slash user u equal equals two nine seven four one oh one wow uh, <laughs> how very george lucas of you i know right <laughs> a little elon musk in there too. um uh but if you go to twitter you'll you'll see a link to that uh i don't and um yeah i i didn't and then i'm more active on facebook for the for the meta factory gets the free live stream every saturday and so and there's a group called the meta factory so if you go to my facebook page that's a good way to get sort of everything i mostly post about poetry and writing you do not get updates on my pet cat <laughs> Or, or my, well, you do get some of my dogs, so, morning. <laughs> uh, so, um, yeah, so. So, Lou, you yeah. said you've got one, um, a separate manuscript that you're working on from mm -hmm. Rosemary, and then there's two more Rosemary books. Uh, mm -hmm. And then, of course, you've got all the poetry that you're working on. Um, is that pretty much where your headset is right now? Is that pretty much where you're focused? Yes. In terms of projects? Okay. Yeah, those are my big projects, the ongoing poetry, the the novel. I had so much fun writing a novel. 
like I really said to myself, I should have been doing this a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, and I'm really kind of mad at myself for not doing it earlier. But you get caught up, kids. Like, yeah, you know, or, you're not getting off the hook now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. I I wish I could. I'm also working on um, with Sue Flat. We're in the beginning stages of working on something like a writer's workshop kind of thing, but we're so in beginning stages that okay. I don't have much to talk about. Yeah. That's cool. So um, we've got about four and a half minutes left. If you had any advice for somebody that is maybe looking at starting their first novel, um, what would you say? A couple things. Um, my, and I'll go back a little bit. My coworker asked me how I started writing. She was sort of looking for me to say, like she's the most millennial of millennials. She wanted to know who was my mentor. That's not what happened. I started writing. So that's my advice. It's always my advice. Start writing. Start anywhere. But if you're going to be writing a novel, write an outline. You will get bogged down. You will get stuck. And it's a great thing to be able to say, oh, what is next? Where am I going? And with the, the novel I'm working on now, the big hurdle I think has been, I've got the world building, I've got the characters, and then I'm like, huh, but where am I going? So I've, so the one of my current big holdups I think is like, I don't have a destination. So even that place in the book I said that I wasn't ending on, but I thought I was, it was a place to head. And so those were the two pieces of the puzzle that I think a writer need, three start <laughs> two one first start two um write an outline in three know where you're going and that's for a novel for poetry you can just start anywhere <laughs> you know i that's my mantra for poetry is start anywhere keep going so um terry thank you so much for being a part of today's signing and um no. I imagine that you're going to get that book delivered with uh, a little extra extra little boom boom uh, at some point. But um, Louise, thank you so much for taking the time to sit with us today to talk with us about um, Rosemary and introducing us to her in the book and, you know, signing some copies. And anybody that's interested, you can, of course, get a copy of the book online at BrickAmedia.com. You can get it direct from Louise. You can order it through your local bookstore. Any local bookstore has the ability to, uh, to order it for you. Um, I'm happy to say that hopefully by the end of summer, we will have a hardbound edition um, that we'll be able to let people get as well. Um, so that'll be exciting, right? So, uh, and then of course, uh, you know, we're just going to move forward from there. Audiobook is on the map. So um, we actually just oh, launched, good. We launched a Kickstarter. Uh, we're in our pre-Kickstarter Kickstarter today for... Uh, getting some funds together to be able to pay voice talent to do audiobooks. So um, all of that information is online at the publisher brickamedia.com. Thank you guys both very much for joining us. Louise, I'm excited to see what the next book is, excited to get working on it. And you guys have a great rest of your day. Excellent. You too. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye. Bye. Bye.